Okay, so we have come up with um, a table of values for the population of rabbits at year one, two, and three, and then recursive and explicit formulas <clears throat> for year n. So that number 1.2 we call the common ratio because it has the value of the current population to last year's population. If you take the ratio of any population to the year before it, you get 1.2. So if I do 1,200 over 1,000, I get 1.2. If I do 1,440 over 1,200, I get 1.2. So any year's population divided by the year before it is always going to give you 1.2, 1728 over 1440, 1.2. And so we call it the common ratio because of that, but I, I often think of it as the common multiplier, what you multiply by to get from one term to the next. So here are the general formulas for exponential growth. Again, you don't need to memorize them because we just came up with formulas for the rabbit population without knowing these. Um, but they're good to have, have handy. So for a recursive formula, you give the starting amount, and then you give um, a formula for how it grows, which would be the previous year's population times the common ratio. And explicit would be the starting amount times the common ratio to the n. Multiply by the common ratio n times. So here's a little bit of a different setup. It's also exponential growth. The Earth's population was about 6 billion in the year 2000. And assuming the population doubles every 45 years, what will the population be in 2045? 12 billion, right? It doubles. 45 years have passed, so it'll double. So let's make a little table with year and population. So we'll put 2,000, 6 billion. And then 2,045, 45 years have gone by, so it should double to 12 billion. How about 2,090? 24 billion. It's going to double again because another set of 45 years has gone by. 2,450. Can you explain how you know that? It's that start amount times the common ratio to the power of n thing. Okay, so you used an, um, you wrote an explicit formula for population. So the population would be the starting amount, which is 6 billion, times the common ratio, which is 2, because we're doubling. And then, you know, we have to put here how many times you're going to double. So from the year 2000 to the year 2450, 450 years have gone by. How many sets of 45 are in there? 10. 450 divided by 45. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, because we could, we, but then we would have had a different starting amount. We would have used 24 billion as our starting. Yeah. So 450 years. In 450 years, there are 10 sets of 45, so that means the population will double 10 times. So I put a 10 there. 6 billion times 2 to the 10. Let's see what that is. Yeah. Uh, 6,144 billion. So that would actually be 6.144 trillion. Yes. <laughs> well, 6 billion in the year 2000 is correct. Um, but generally, population cannot continue to double because we have limited resources, limited space. Um, this kind of growth is not sustainable. So um, we don't know how long we will actually continue to do that. So that's 2,450 gives, gives us 6.144 trillion. How about 2,900? 
How many years have gone by from 2000 to 2900? 900 years. And how many sets of 45 are in 900? 20. Yep, so I would just do 900 divided by 45 and say, oh, 20 sets of 45 years have gone by, so I will double my population 20 times. So I'm going to do 6 times 2 to the 20 this time. 6 billion times 2 to the 20, and that would come out to 2 to the 20 times 6. Ooh, uh, six million, six million two hundred ninety-one thousand four hundred fifty-six, and that's billion people. Um, after trillion, so this would be trillion, so it'd be quadrillion, six quadrillion, two hundred ninety-one trillion, four hundred fifty-six billion. Yeah, this is six greater than six quadrillion people. So we see the power of exponential growth is that it's really fast. Numbers can get big really fast when you're constantly multiplying by the same amount. So what about the Earth's population in 2,120? It is harder. Why is it harder than the previous ones? Yeah, you can't. It's not a set number of 40. There are, it's not a multiple of 45 years. So let's just see. 2,120, so 120 years divided by 45 is like 2 and 2 thirds. So it's going to double twice, but not quite three times. So it's doubling somewhere between two and three times. So yeah, it's a good idea. We'll just use 2.67. We'll round it. OK, so we're going to double. Population doubles between two and three times. So if I go back to my table over here, my population should come out somewhere between 12 and 24 billion, doubling, sorry, between 24 and 48. Doubling twice would be 24, right? So double twice, we start at 6, so we get 12, 24. And then doubling a third time, we get 48. So my answer should come out somewhere between 24 billion and 48 billion. We're doubling more than twice, but not quite three times. And in all of my previous ones, I used my explicit formula. I said, well, the population at any given year is start with the 6 billion and multiply by 2. And then we figured out how many times we were going to double. So um, Brent's suggestion was just use the 2.67 as the exponent. Who cares that it's not a whole number? So let's try, let's try that and see what it comes out to. So I'm going to do 2 to the 2.67, then multiply by 6 billion, and I get 38.19 billion. And that is between 24 and 48, so it's, a, it's an answer that makes sense. So we'll go with it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Got it? Okay.
40, 24 billion and 48 billion. Yeah. Okay, so here's a question I want you to discuss in your groups. We're going to think of a bank account as just a population full of dollars. And would you rather to have a bank account with $1 million in it? Would you rather just somebody hand you a check for a million dollars? Or you have a bank account that starts with one penny and doubles in value every day for 30 days? Don't answer yet. Think about it in your groups. On the one hand, we have a million dollars, right? Pretty tempting. So let's see what happens if you start with a penny and double it in value every day for 30 days. So I'm going to start with a formula for the population in my bank account. And the initial amount is one penny, so I'm going to put 0 .01. That way my answer will come out in dollars rather than pennies. So I have one penny, and I'm going to double it 30 times. So times 2 to the 30th. So I calculate that, and I have um, 2 to the 30th, then times 0 0.01. And we get 10,737,000, no, dollars, because I used 0 0.01 instead of 1, yeah. Um, 418.24 dollars. So clearly, I want the... Uh, I want the penny. Yeah, me too. <laughs> How many? 30 days. 30 days. So again, we see the power of exponential growth. When you get to multiply by, by a number over and over and over again, the numbers grow really fast. All right, here's another interesting exponential growth problem. So it's difficult to measure the thickness of a single sheet of paper, right, because you have to have an instrument that's, like, really fine to measure it. But we can figure it out using the fact that a ream that you buy from the store that has 500 sheets in it is 5 centimeters thick. So what would the um, thickness of a single sheet be? 1 one hundredth of a centimeter. You do 5 centimeters divided by 500 sheets. Um, yeah, 5 centimeters divided by 500 sheets of paper. And you get 0 0.01 centimeters per sheet. So we have 0 0.01. So very small. .01 centimeters. Now, if you take a sheet of paper that's 0.01 centimeters, like this, and you fold it in half, the thickness of that sheet of paper has now doubled. Right? It's now twice as thick as it was. It's now 0.02 centimeters thick. So uh, this is 0.01, and when I fold it once, I get 0.02, and then I fold it again. Right, so now it's like four sheets of paper thick, so I have 0.04. And then I fold it again, so it's 0.08. So my, my thickness doubles every time I fold the paper. So then I have 0.16. So I'm just going to continually double the thickness of my paper. So try to think of um, an explicit and a recursive formula for T sub n. I'll give you a minute or two to do that in your groups. All right, so recursive. To get from one number in my T sub n list to the next, I'm doubling, right? So I'm going to say that any given T sub n is the previous t sub n, which we denote with the t sub n minus 1, times 2. 
And then for explicit, T sub n is going to be, well, I'm going to start with 0 0.01. I'm going to start with 0 0.01 before I've done any folding. And then I double it a certain number of times. So I'm going to do times 2 to the n, because I'm going to multiply by 2 n times. So we have a recursive and an explicit formula. Now discuss in your groups. Go through the rest of these questions here. Up through the moon one. OK, so let's discuss some of these answers. The thickness after seven folds, well, I know that the thickness after n folds is 0 0.01 times 2 to the n. So if I want the thickness after seven folds, I just make the n a 7. Thickness after seven folds is 0 0.01 times 2 to the seventh, which comes out to what? What? 1.28? Centimeters. So that's relatively small, right? Centimeters like that. Okay. So how many folds did it take to get um, to five, about five centimeters? Nine, yeah. So T sub nine. So this was just some guess and check. Um, you knew that seven didn't get you far enough, so you might try eight and then nine, and you see that nine gets you a little further than you need to go. This would be 0.01 times 2 to the ninth, which is 5 point, what was it, 1, 8, 1, 2, 1, 2 centimeters. So it's about 9 folds to make a ream of paper. And then the thickness after 15 folds, T sub 15, that would be 0 0.01 times 2 to the 15th which came out to about 327 centimeters. And the question is, how big is that? I asked you to convert to appropriate units. So there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So I can divide this by 100 to get meters. So this is 3.27 meters. And the meter is like about 3 feet. It's not perfect, but 3.3. So this comes out to, if it's 3.3, .3, let's see, about 10 feet. We'll just do approximately 10 feet, which is really tall. You know, I only had to fold that piece of paper 15 times, and it's already the height of, like, the ceiling. I don't think you could fold one sheet of paper 15 times. Yeah, no, I think there's actually a physical, it's been tested many times, and I don't think you could do it more than seven. Oh, it's been on Mythbusters? <laughs> yeah. no, more than eight, OK. So we're just talking theoretically here, if you could. What? So let's see what happens after 20 folds. 0 0.01 times 10 to the 20. Oh, yeah, sorry. 10 to the 20 would be really too big. <laughs> times 2 to the 20, so 2 to the 20 times 0 0.01, and I get 10,485 centimeters. I'm being really cavalier about the rounding here because I really just want to know like about how big this is. Yep, so this is 104 meters. Divide by 100, and you get meters. And that's like, you know, anybody run the 100 meters in high school track? So this is like about the length of a football field. So 20 folds, it's like the length of a football field already. So we're seeing the power of exponential growth again, right? You get really big really fast. 25 folds. Let's see. So 2 to the 25 times 0 0.01. So 
So 335,544 centimeters. So convert it to meters and I get 3,355.44 meters. How long is that? Uh, yes. How many meters are in a kilometer? A thousand. So I could divide this by a thousand and get 3.35 kilometers. Now, if we have the sun in the exam, do you need us to break it down to kilometers? Or do I, would, I would tell you the conversions if I wanted you to do something like this on an exam. Give it, like, give us a sheet or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the unit conversions isn't the big part of this lesson. I just am trying to show you that it's getting really big. So we have, in order to see, think about how big it is, it has to be in units that we associate size with. So yeah, there's, um, I think there's 1.6 kilometers in a mile. 1.6 kilometers in a mile. So if I want miles here, <clears throat> should I multiply or divide by 1.6? Yeah, divide by 1.6. So it's about two miles. Because miles are bigger than kilometers, so there should be fewer miles than kilometers. So, so this is about 2.1 miles. 25 folds. It only takes 25 times to fold that paper, and it's now two miles. Two miles long. Super thin, right? <laughs> Really, really thin. So the distance from the Earth to the Moon is 384,403 kilometers. Um, anybody come up with an answer how many folds it would take to get to the Moon? 42 exceeds it. 41 is not enough. 41 to 42? Yeah, 36. 36? Let's try. So I got a couple of answers. We have a 36. And then 41, between 41 and 42. So let's try 36. The thickness after 36 folds will be 0 0.01 times 2 to the 36. So 2 to the 36 times 0 0.01. And I get 687194767. 687194767. Four, seven, six, seven. I think that was it. Yeah. That's centimeters. We gotta convert it to kilometers in order to measure against the distance to the moon. So to convert it to kilometers, first I go to meters, I divide by a hundred. That gives me meters. Then to get to kilometers, divide that by a thousand. So I get six thousand eight hundred seventy one kilometers. Not enough. We off by a factor of 10 or 100 or something. Yeah. Okay, so let's try. Um, <laughs> what'd you get? Mm, it can't be 25 because 36 wasn't enough. So you must have made a little mistake there. Yeah, I think that 4142 is right. Let's check T42. 0 0.01 times 2 to the 42. 2 to the 42 times 0.01. 439-804-65111 centimeters. To convert it to kilometers, I go to meters and then kilometers. So to get meters, divide by 100. To get kilometers, divide that by 1,000. So I get 439,804 kilometers. Yeah. Which is a little bit further away than the moon is, right? The moon is 384. And this is 439. So this is a little bit bigger than necessary. But if we went back to T41, I would have to have this. And that would not be big enough. So I'd say 42 folds gets us past the moon. 
42 folds gets past the moon. So do you need to do the divided by 100 first and then divided by 1,000? Doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Or you could just say, you could just say 41's not quite enough, 42's a little too big. So, um... Tim asked me earlier, please tell me these numbers aren't real, right? Your name's Tim, right? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so anyways, exponential growth is not generally sustainable because it is really powerful. Exponential growth causes things to grow really, really fast. We've seen it in several examples. Populations get really big when they're experiencing exponential growth. But it's generally not sustainable because resources like food and water and space are finite. You can't just keep growing bigger and bigger and bigger forever. So a more realistic population growth model is called a logistic curve. And it starts off looking exponential. So this part is what exponential growth looks like. It's getting big really fast. But then it slows down and levels off at a value called the carrying capacity of the environment. And I'm not going to go into, like, the formula of logistic growth um, like we did for linear and exponential, but that might be, make a really good project if someone was interested in looking into um, logistic growth. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and population growth slows down. Yeah. You absolutely can factor in, um, more, make the model more and more complicated to account for all these different variables. Yeah. OK, so the, le the last bit of the um, lecture is um, a group activity that I'm going to have you work on about um, bacteria. Bacteria often grow exponentially. Yes. <laughs>